Man, welcome back to Boat Junkies. This is a uh, season finale, correct? Season finale. We had to bring a special guest, and we booted Malcolm. We got tired of listening to him talking and fidgeting with his mic, so uh, <laughs> we brought a replacement in this week. Mikey, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, this is uh, Colin McKendry. He works for uh, BWI, and uh, Colin and them they sell a lot of uh, a lot of farm supplies and things like that. But they also sell a lot of wildlife uh, equipment and uh, just uh, enhancement products for your property and for your your uh, herd. So, uh, Colin, you want to yeah. tell us a little bit yeah. about yourself? Yeah. Uh, first off, appreciate y'all having me on. Uh, I like to think I'm a lot better looking than Malcolm. So, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody agrees with that. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, so like Mikey said, I work for BWI companies and essentially anytime you go into a co-op, whether it be a pest control product, uh, anything as simple as corn, your commodities, your food plot seeds, chemicals, that comes from us. Um, pretty much in the whole state of Mississippi, if you're listening from Mississippi, um, the whole entire state, anything you see in a co-op does come from BWI. There's other states that we're not in that, you know, obviously something a little different, but a lot of times if you look at seed tags, you'll see seed or Branded by BWI companies. so Well, that's one reason I passed that off to Mikey, because I just knew it as Colin, and I really didn't know what the heck you done. I knew hey. it was a lot of everything, but <laughs> I wasn't 100% sure. As Jamie and I discussed earlier, it's a whole lot easier to say what I don't do half the <laughs> time. Except the, the not list versus the to-do list was a big difference. Yeah, 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 very much so. But we know everything from um, Sportsman's Condos. I know it's a very popular brand everybody knows about. Um, everything from Muddy to Mary Step. Uh, heck, we even got fishing rods now, so that's a new thing really? for me. Yeah, so it's... We're continually growing, which is a good thing. It means business is good, so everybody's getting paid. So I mean, that's the thing. Used to co-op was just farmer related. Right. Now yep. it's done progressed. It's out to hunter to the average guy doing something in the backyard. It's it's everything. Yeah, and that's not just uh, I, farmer related. I guess I think that's the cool thing is you can support your local co-op yeah. a whole lot easier now than you used to be able to because used to be like you said you go into a co-op yeah. you want a bag of corn or whatever now you can get anything in there. Which so co-op I've always wondered this is it co-op itself a major company or just everybody call that store the co-op just as general so i think that's dependent <laughs> on states so alabama has like their own cooperative system right mississippi to my knowledge does not have that it's like your own locally owned type locally deal owned, yeah so like because everybody out. calls them a co-op no matter where you go and yeah. i was like well heck is that like the walmart for farmers or is it yeah. just mm-hmm. it's a name that stuck like big star grocery store i guess i don't know yeah, so like Alabama, they have a Alabama cooperative system. Greenpoint Ag, which a lot of people may know, is part of that cooperative system in Alabama. Um, so thank the good Lord I don't have to deal with them very often because they are a very stiff competitor for our guys over there. So, uh, But it's here, I think it's more individually owned. I know they all smell the same. They definitely do. Yeah, Man, every can, one of them smell the same. Unless they tell, got ant poison, they smell terrible. You can tell when they get that <laughs> surrender in there. And my <laughs> gosh, it's... It's hard to go in our warehouse. It's hard to be anywhere close to it. So. That's something I wish somebody could explain. I wish Why I could the heck explain it ant poison smells like death? You you would think know. you'd be drawing in buzzards and not Man. ants, but ant poison is horrible. For we me. were at that contest this past weekend. The team right across from us, Poe Things, they had some ants in their spot. And they weren't sprinkling it. Oh. And I was like, good Lord, man. My what wife is, can tell when I've been around that because I'll come home and she's like, you smell awful. Yeah, they'll test yeah. you. It'll test your gag reflex for what sure. Was it Will? You yeah, had he was out there at my house one day when I was putting it out, and he was walking. He was smaller, he was a little kid, and he was walking behind me. What do you what, what, what are you doing, Uncle Jamie? That's something he would he would dry heave him between every sentence. It seemed like that stuff's potent. It is. I'm glad like a lot of other things don't smell like that because it'd be bad. Yeah. I got this stuff. Uh, I didn't read the directions on the back of the. It was a can, and it may have been. I don't remember what the chemical was. It was in it, but I poked them holes in there. You're not supposed to inhale that stuff at all. <laughs> right. Well, I I mean, I didn't read nothing. I just grabbed out the ant poison, went out there to the field, and went to shaking it on. And, well, I got dizzy and started feeling sick. Oh, yeah. And then I got to reading the back of the can. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, it'll uh, <laughs> Let me get to the house. <laughs> it'll definitely test your gag reflex, like you said. So it's uh, it's potent. But. Well, that's something else. Something we've talked about a bunch on here is what you get probably at a co-op is going to be a better – they're going to better suit you for your food plot application than, than big box store, multi blend bag stuff. Well, you have right. no, like Very we talked before, so. you have no idea how long that multi blend bag's been sitting at a warehouse. It could have been made five years ago and it's just now hitting the shelves. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas most of the stuff you provide is relatively 
I would say it's a pretty quick turnover rate on seed stuff locally. We literally get a truck in from Texas who bags we bag all of our stuff in Texas, and within I would say three days that whole entire truck's gone. Yeah. It's in your store now. Walmart they can't say that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean they've had it in the back room yeah. for probably three, four years sometimes. So. But not on. I mean, not only that. I mean, you go to the co-op. I mean, most of those guys are very educated in oh, yeah. you know the stuff that they're selling. So you know if you if you're having trouble like like applying pesticides or something and don't know what to do, those guys can help you you know, give you some information that you normally would have had to just look at, you know, on the internet or whatever. I mean, you can do that too, but you can go and have a conversation with those guys. Look, I want to plant this. What kind of fertilizer do you recommend? What kind of, what do I need to spray on it? Stuff like that. Well, so you get a lot of information from them if you. They're familiar with the area as far as what mm-hmm. the soil can handle. And there's, there's a lot more to it than yep. just ordering some seed, putting it in the ground. I've learned a whole lot more you. from those guys than I have. <laughs> yeah. Any training class I've ever been a part of. So. Yeah, because it's just because it works in a book, sounds good in a book, yeah. don't mean it works no. in dirt. So. Those guys can tell you <laughs> what works, what doesn't, like you said. So, yeah, but you got uh, you got your own property that you manage also. That mm-hmm. was another reason I wanted you to come on here and talk about it. Not only do you, you sell those products, but you utilize those products on a couple of different properties. You got one in Alabama and you got one here in Mississippi mm-hmm. too. Yep. Um, and of course, the rules are different from Alabama to Mississippi on a lot of different things. We're going to get into that later and, and talk about some of that, but uh, so I guess really to start off, like what products do you, what kind of, what kind of products do y'all sell like right now for like land management? Like if somebody's, I know y'all do the seeds and, and things like that, but y'all, y'all have some other products that y'all utilize for land management and stuff like that too. Uh, right now we're very, very heavy. And I know it's probably no surprise to anybody. Very heavy in chemical season. Yeah. Your, uh, your glyphosate, your, uh, class of dems everybody's buying stuff like that go and stock up and everybody's still scared of what the market's going to do and i can assure you the market's a whole lot more comfortable than it was three years ago yeah so there's no need in panic buying anymore everything's okay yeah um uh, and like you said seeds so right now it's your big thing right now is going to be your chemicals and your seeds really so so i guess you know a lot of the products that y'all you you know the seeds and things like that what what seeds what seeds have you had success with in like the summer and stuff like that so I consider myself probably a little similar to kind of what you guys have. And mm-hmm. there's other people out there that are going to disagree with me on this. Um, but I think whenever you're you're looking at a food plot, a summer, a warm season food plot, you need to look at two things. One, it's going to be your browsing pressure. And two, what is the history of that property? Uh, my browsing pressure is insanely high. Yeah. Um, we have tried soybeans and like I told you earlier, it was they disappear like, quick. I'm like, well, why didn't yeah. they come up? Well, they came up, you know, <laughs> but they just, they didn't get, they didn't canopy over. Um, so I have to work on my numbers, um, on my browsing pressure. And two, when I say the history of a property, I look at, am I dealing with grasses or am I dealing with weeds such as coffee weed, or am I dealing with Johnson grass, Dallas grass, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm dealing with a lot of coffee weed. Um, so I'm kind of limited as to what I can do because you can't spray the same chemicals on your grasses as you can this because you'll kill your, your food plots. That's right. Um, so the seeds that I've really found that work for me is going to be your joint vetch, your Alice clover, and I love cowpeas. Yeah. I put cowpeas in with all that, just kind of your early green boost, hurry up and get it up, you know, something green to make it look pretty. So you mix that in with your vetch? Yep. I'll mix that in with my vetch. Um, and we do a lot of, uh, no-till topsoil sowing in um which if you don't know what that is uh you essentially kill your weeds wait four or five days however long you want to wait just broadcast your seed out on top uh, and when that stuff essentially starts melting down that moisture starts collecting in those seeds and you get good germination that way and that's a if you don't have a lot of tools that's that's the way to go yeah that's what a lot of people think they got to have a hundred thousand dollar tractor no. to, to no. do a food plot when you don't no we've got a like a I don't know what year it is. An old farm all that <laughs> hardly runs half the time. You got to put oil in it every 15 minutes. I mean, you don't have to have all that fancy stuff. I mean, it's nice to have. Don't get me wrong. But for your average Joe, it's it's nice just to no-till topsoil stuff. So. But y'all, I mean, y'all actually have, uh, y'all do have companies y'all are affiliated with that sell stuff to go on like side-by-sides and things mm-hmm. like that too. Yeah, so we do like even sprayers. Um, Tartar, who's a big one of ours, they have like a tractor attachments. Um and any of your co-ops, like we talked about, any of your co-ops around here, more than likely is going to have some of our attachments, and obviously they're going to have sprayers. Um, uh, a sprayer for your side-by-side is probably the best investment you really can make, in my opinion. Yeah, I think if, yeah. you, were, if you were starting out with a property and food, that would be one of the – if you had a side-by-side or a four-wheeler, that would yeah. be the number one thing 
that can knock back the weeds and you can like say you can manually do your seeding yourself absolutely absolutely so that's a uh, i guess a way you can beat the system instead of going by a brand new john deere or whatever it may be so yeah, we Unless, got we got two tractors out there and i do a lot of a lot of spraying with our side by side just because it's more agile and it's not so oh, yeah. big and some of those smaller food plots that we have, you know, I, I have to have that. Otherwise I'm getting all folding booms up, getting out, rolling them back down, you know, maneuvering the tractor around the food plot that I got planted, probably tearing up my clover and stuff. So for the ease is, it's yeah. just, it's so much better. Well, if you look at that sprayer miles had last week. I mean, that was a, yeah, that's a freaking sprayer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many gallons that dude holds, but, uh, he could do a couple hundred acres in just a few minutes. It's pretty large. Yeah, those are those are always nice to have, but sometimes they're not efficient for the, the average person. So. Yeah, that's um uh, th- those those attachments for those side by sides. Well, they they they've helped us a lot, and you know, all of us have started out at some point with something small. I mean, we broke up we broke them up with tillers and hand tools and stuff like that. You know, just to off the to ground with up. a you know a chain link fence and a four wheeler. Yeah, I mean, you you got to do what you got to do sometimes. So. So the vetch thing, do you, we've just been turned on to it, what, probably three years ago? Yeah. So why is that something that's not talked about that much, I guess? I, don't, I mean, I've never heard of vetch, until, like I say, until we had it down here. And in the first year, I was I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with it. But, well, to be honest with you, during COVID, vetch was near impossible to get. To get. And um, it's not the, I probably wouldn't, it's probably not the cheapest. No, it's not. It's not great. But it's. The results have been, we've had, I mean, what Mikey's done down here has been phenomenal. I mean, I, we've loved yeah. it. Yeah, Mikey's done a good job down here. I've seen some of the stuff you've done down here. And the thing about vetch that a lot of people don't understand is if you get a good stand on vetch, like a five-foot stand or whatever it may yeah. be, it's going to come back. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's more it expensive. It through two frosts, three frosts down here, you know, yeah. Before, yeah. before it browned yeah. up, you know. But So, yeah. yeah, it's more expensive, but if it comes back. Is it yeah. really more expensive? I mean, that's, that's what I was yeah. thinking to say. That, you know, what you were, me and you were discussing earlier before we walked in here and started talking about, you know, the guy that planted the beans mm-hmm. and didn't think they came up, you know, and they did come up. The deer just Why? devastated them. So, you know, we put cages around our stuff to be able to tell that what our browse pressure is. And that's one of the biggest things before you make a commitment to something like beans. You know, if that's just strictly your your summer plot, you might want to be careful because if your browse pressure is high, they're going to wipe the same way with like cow peas, but you're mixing yours. But right. uh, there's nothing wrong with putting those, adding them in. But that vetch, it might be more expensive, but you only buy it one time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they don't handle it. Yeah. And yeah. they don't handle that browse pressure. It's way more tolerant than even a forage soybean, as people yeah. call it. I mean, it's even though it's called a forage soybean, it's still going to well, get wiped out. So we never would have known how good that vetch was if we didn't have the cages. Yeah. That was the biggest thing. It's like it it looked good, and we're like, "Oh man, it's doing great." But then you look over the cage, we're like, "Heck, that's four foot tall." Right. Oh, and yeah. what we got in the field, six inches tall. Yeah. You know, if, if you don't have the opportunity to get abolished out, that's one way you can kind of examine your property yourself and do the cage. I mean, it's yeah, that's that's easy peasy. You can buy those. Uh, I mean, you can go to the co op or anywhere really and just buy those. I mean, T-Post kind of expensive oh, yeah. now, but you can use just wood stakes or something like that. Just stake off a big enough area where the deer can't reach his head over in there or get it high enough where he can't get his head over in there. And or something as simple as I've had a guy put like a 72-inch tomato cage out there. Yeah. And just yeah. something easy. It doesn't, you don't have to overthink it by any means. Yeah. So. Just some kind of some kind of barrier there to keep them from being able to browse that stuff. And you, you'll you be surprised at what – you'd really oh, yeah. be surprised at, at, at what you find out on your property. That is That has educated us a lot. And you'll be surprised to figure out your cameras aren't picking up a lot of it. Too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of deer on – probably somewhere on your camera that you don't see. Oh, yeah, you, you get a picture of your doe in the front, but if you look in the back, there's 30 deer back there where there could be a deer you don't even know about back there. So so with the amount of seed you see that gets dispersed across the state, what is the hidden gem? Because you know a lot of people, most everybody, they want to spend money, they're going to go get white clover. Yep. They're going to plant, like we say, they're going to plant beans and then be pissed off because they didn't come up. But what is the hidden gem in the South right now? Right now, I'd have to say Vetch is making its comeback. Uh, there's not a store that I know of in North Mississippi that hadn't asked for Vetch this year, and that's my counterpart in South Mississippi. We communicate back and forth, obviously, because we feed off each other. But yeah. his uh, Trey's told me the same thing. He's like, you know, Vetch is Vetch is a hot item now, and yeah. of course, like we've already discussed, it's still getting a little bit harder to get Vetch. It's, it's a lot better than it was three years ago, but it's uh, I'd say Vetch and probably still soybeans. I yeah. mean, soybeans I think are always going to be. 
your your top dog. But well, if you got that browse, if you don't have that browse and pressure, yeah. that's that's a great. You know, it's great to plant those. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's a, a curse or a good thing that we have such heavy, you know, browsing pressure. Yeah. I mean, you want to see deer on every hunt, but at the same time, you're like, I wish y'all stop eating my my soybeans. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. at least give them a week or yeah, two. like let them let them try to canopy over a little bit. Them cow peas that Mikey planted that year, I mean, they were they come up, they were probably knee to waist high, beautiful on one, Friday. Yeah, one weekend, <laughs> and then on Sunday it was like. Man, the apocalypse done came. Like, they are gone. I encourage anybody that's wanting to plant cow peas to mix it with something. Because, I mean, your cow peas are going to get hammered. And if for some odd reason you want to bow hunt a cow pea stand and we happen to get a random frost, cow peas are going to get wiped out. Yeah. So, you know, that's something to consider. I have a lot of people that want to put Alice Clover or even Betch in with cow peas now. So, why do they call it cow peas? Or do you know? <laughs> I always, have no everybody's idea. Everybody's always called it, but I've never, I don't know what the. They're actually calling like what, iron and clay or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Iron, iron and clay, clay yeah. is what they're calling, but you'll. I don't know. Yeah, everybody called it cow Tomato, peas, tomato but, thing yeah. type things. Yeah. I mean, but I'm sure there's somebody that's going to get on to us for calling them cow peas and not iron and clay iron peas. Clay, so. iron clay peas. Mississippi, we call them cow peas. Yeah, that's right. So. But yeah, those, uh, those, those are all pretty good, you know, summertime, uh, plots and and things that we that you can do especially that vetch you know if you can find that that's that's one of the great ones uh put in with that heavy browsing pressure uh we did we have in the past mixed like buckwheat or you know cow peas or something in there just to kind of kind of get you up like you you were talking about you know mixing something with it to once they start getting in there is keeping the browsing pressure off of that vetch a little bit to where it can get really good and established before they get on it hard right. um but that always works uh clovers and things like that you know which we've talked a lot about clover and uh you know those those come and go through the season depending on what kind of weather we have we yep. have droughts and stuff like that so uh but that vetch that vetch usually that vetch makes it through man it's it's drought resistant and yep. it don't take a whole lot to take care of it and i had a you talking about clover i had a, a conversation with a customer yesterday i had a uh, another customer of theirs come in this person on the co-op and they were not happy with their clover and they're like you know every time i cut it it's almost like it's killing it. The thing to keep in mind with clover is every time you cut it, you're stressing it. Yeah. I understand everybody wants to cut the seed heads off clover and there's nothing wrong with that. But time of rain. Mm. If you cut the seed heads off and it's, y'all knows what's out there. It's hot in Mississippi. Yeah. I mean, it's brutally hot in Mississippi and it's already starting to get hot in Mississippi. So to be honest with you, and I know this what makes people mad, we don't even cut our clover anymore. See, I was, we let it seed out. I was listening to podcasts. That's what the guy said. He was like, you know, he said, I'm going to get hate mail for this. And people say you're supposed to cut twice a year. He said, and I forgot how it was like in the thousands of acres. Oh, yeah. This guy was over and he said, we do not touch our, he said, we, we, we treat it for weeds and we right, fertilize it right. as far as cutting yeah. it. And he said, we do not cut it. And he said, I can sit there and tell you this clover has been here X amount of years and we've never had issue out of it. And they just spot spray when they need yep. to. And that's it. And there's people that swear that you have to cut clover twice a year, three times a year, whatever it may be. That's not necessarily. The case, yeah. But. I mean, we, we've done it before where I've cut it and you know, it, it, it hurt it. Oh Yeah. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll stress it. If you get you cut it today in the next two weeks, there's nothing but right. ninety five plus degree weather, no rain. Yeah, you're finna you're finna yep. burn some stuff. Yep. I've I've done it before and pretty much killed a clover crop. So. That's why I'm, you know, with the past two years us having that those droughts and stuff, you know, is letting that clover get up and mature. I mean, because there's still smaller clover up yep. under that, right. you know, and the deer may not eat that, but that's really using that as like a canopy for those smaller mm-hmm. ones not to burn up so fast. Yep, that's true. So. And if you're worried about your seed heads, you always can overseed it when you need oh, absolutely. to. Like, I mean, it's put it out there. You'll get some regrowth. I mean, I know y'all had some cows. Y'all thought <laughs> wiped out y'all stuff, but I mean, we got cow clover down here, not cow peas. And you know, Malcolm and I rode back there not long ago, and y'all's clover looks good. Yeah, I mean, it's it looks good considering he thought it was wiped out completely. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna come back. Just you know, be patient with clover. I think it too. It's easy to get discouraged because, like, I was talking to a guy this weekend come up wanting to talk about clover, and he was like, "Man, we." It's our first year, you know, we planted it last year and he's like, man, it just don't look good. And I was like, well, it ain't going to look good no, first year. No. Like it's one of them things like it's going to take a couple of years because yep. I mean, I hated clover the first few years because I was like, man, this is crap. I, I get, love it. It's still my favorite thing. It yeah. don't make it through the summer. Like it to me, I never seen the benefit. And now that it's established, I'm like, all right, well, it's, you know, it's holding up and I mean, we got more clover now. We've that's had a long time. Best, that's probably the best year we've had for clover. And that's, Three or four years into it, probably we've done it, and this it's definitely paid off. It's a long term deal for sure. It's not a 
reap the benefits real quick. You know, right. It's going yeah, to be several years. There's a lot of people that get mad when they put clover in. And I've had people call me, well, I bought this clover 30 days ago. Why is it not popping up? I'm like, well, you're playing clover this year for next year. Yeah. yeah. You're not playing it for this year. I, mean, I think but, it's around here. There's so many people that do lease or used to rather do leases on timber company. Right. And they don't do nothing like we talked last week. They don't go in there all for, when deer season over, they don't come back until fall and yep. they plant these fall plots and expect miracle results. And you're not going, it's like anything in the world. You got to put something in to get something out. It's not going to just happen overnight right. and it's yeah. not going to be the best of the best right off the bat. And you got to work for it. Yeah. They're putting in your common, your wheat over out, your, yeah. your three way mix, or maybe even a six way with a little bit of small percentage of clover in yep. it. But, but. And they love that ryegrass. I don't, they love some ryegrass, which they look. It's a. It makes a beautiful feel. Oh, that's, I think that's a more of a visual thing than it is. It makes a beautiful yeah. feel, but there's. I'm Always sure people are gonna get mad about this too. But zero benefit. To zero it. benefits. Yeah, to no it. protein. So, so talking about you know benefits for your deer and enhancing your deer, which is what we're doing by planting you know these summer plots and keeping things like that in there. What are some What are some other products that people can use to enhance their deer herds? Well, if you're not in a area where you can supplement feed, I highly recommend you supplement feed. Um, why it's extra protein um, a lot of times what we have figured out in our place in Alabama we can supplement feed we have a 1400 acres and then we'll get into Willow Oak Lodge here a little bit later um, on our 1400 acres we have some of our bigger bucks that won't step foot into our food plots but they'll wear out your protein I think it's just a uh, I guess you could say a smarter deer yeah. I guess you could say he didn't get to be you know a six year old deer by being dumb, right? Yeah, right. By standing in a hundred right. acre food plot, right? So he's <laughs> off the beaten path because where we put our protein, we don't we don't hunt that. That's strictly they go there for comfort. They go over there for the the protein source. Um, and in the summer, I think that's even more beneficial to your does because if you look at your, I'm speaking for Mississippi and Alabama. If you look at your breeding dates, your does are going to be lactating, gestate, all that. Yeah, I mean coming up if they're not already coming up, and you're going to have fawns phone, dropping and everything. That's going to be a protein source and a calorie source that they may not can even get or completely from a food plot where they yeah. do need a you know supplemental food. But um, a supplemental feeding to me, I wish we could do it here in Mississippi where we are, just because I think the benefits are incredible. So I mean, you you've you may have seen this. So just say you started feeding, how long does it take for like protein to really take a hold and for people to start seeing results out of that? I think that's dependent on the property. It's going to be back to the what's your grazing pressure. Yeah. I think if you got you know fifty million does in a, a twenty acre plot and whatever, um, I, I think it's not going to take long at all. And then you're going to be really mad that you went through a pallet in about two weeks. Of it. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I think for for example the fourteen hundred we have in Alabama, um, I'd say two weeks they comfortably found it. Um, and, you know we were able to mix in some other attractants such as you know peanut butter rice bran whatever a little bit of corn just to get them on the spot and then we can yeah. wane them off all that so so you know what what are you looking for when you're feeding those is that i mean is that like i know protein's gonna put you know body weight on the deer mm -hmm. does it does it affect their horns and things like that probably not like people think Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. yeah everybody thinks because they do it on tv you know you while we feed x protein and yeah. look at this 190 inch deer we just couldn't tell they all the eighty thousand dollar dough that right. bred with that genetics, <laughs> or they're in Iowa, where it's like, oh, congrats, you killed a hundred eighty inch deer. That's good. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's <clears throat> that's normal. That's normal, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, I think I base my success of, success of supplemental supplemental feeding off of how much fat is on a deer. When we kill a buck or whatever at the end of the year, last year, I mean, it was two to three inches of fat we had on every single buck yeah. we killed, and that to me is good because you're beefing up the deer, you're making a healthier deer. And you're just making a better looking deer, in my opinion. But you're allowing him to get his full potential. That's right. That's right. And I think us supplemental feeding has even taught us to pass on deer that we typically would have shot. So, for example, we had a, a three year old over in Alabama that was a beautiful one fifty ish. We ended up passing on him because we're like, well, we think this deer can look better, and he, he ended up getting taken by a neighbor and beautiful, beautiful deer he ended up being taken at four and a half year old, and I think he ended up scoring like one sixty four, one sixty five, or something like that. But um, it's, I don't know, supplemental feeding to me, just, I love it. I, I mean, think people get a, a bad idea of you're enhancing it unnaturally. Right. Yeah. And you're honestly not, you're just, you got to understand like in Mississippi or anywhere that 
goes through the summers like we do or the the food source isn't there those deer are mountaineers to begin with right so you don't really see the full potential of that deer because he's not really eating everything it's not like me and you we can go to the mexican restaurant at night and eat all we want it's right. you know he's getting what he can get yep. and then when you put that protein out there he's actually becoming the deer he was supposed to be right or the doe either way you know so i think it's it's easy to get a bad rap for it and because i guess i mean heck we always thought outlaws feeding deer, you know, and I guess oh, yeah. that's, yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's kind of the the state of mind we grew up in, you right. know. Shoot, ain't no different going getting Flintstone vitamins for you. That's right. right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> taking a, a multivitamin day, that's I mean, right. it's the same concept. I mean, that's all got calcium, phosphorus, it's all got all that in it. So, I mean, it's it's more than just your steroids for deer, whatever you yeah. want to call it. I mean, it's it's not the case. But like, the, <clears throat> can you also use like just those pour out bag minerals and stuff like that and get the same results or is there a different result there? A lot of those pour out bag minerals are exactly that. They're just a mineral. They're going to yeah. be your calcium, your phosphorus. They're not going to have much protein in it. Uh, I think Whitetail Institute makes like a 30 alt six vitamin with protein in it. Yeah. Um, but your protein's down. You know, they say whenever you get over to 16 to 18% of protein on deer, like say you feed 20%, well, 2% of that protein is going to go to waste because deer can only maintain 16 to 18, whatever yeah. percent of protein. So those are fine, but half the time their only protein content is going to be 10 to 12. So if you can maximize to get your 16 to 18%, I don't see why you would. And I mean, I, I got guys that feed, you know, 12% all, you know, all stock feed and just throw it in a trough feeder and feed their deer that there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think if you can maximize your protein potential, I think it's a good idea to do that. So what is your take on, we've talked about this before, you know, I guess the main reason that Mississippi, they frown on feeding or we can't feed is because of CWD. Mm-hmm. So in my opinion, and I want your take on this, <laughs> maybe <laughs> to me, if you're, you're feeding the animal, you're giving it protein, you're creating a healthier animal. Right. Therefore, in my opinion, should offset CWD. To me, it's like you're creating a bigger issue not feeding this animal because he does, you know, he's stressed, you know, not as healthy, malnourished. Of course, you're more likely to get sick. Susceptible to the disease. So they're all saying, well, they're eating out of the same protein pile or corn pile. Their saliva's on the corn. He's going to get it. He's, But yet, if they're all healthy and good, their immune system's better. Right. What out like how do you how do you judge that or how do you what's your take on that? I think we should be able to supplement feed. I'm I agree with everything you just said. And my thing is, if you've ever seen a canopied over soybean that just got eaten by a deer, you can go up there and there's saliva on it. Mm-hmm. We've we've seen that firsthand. Like not by the same deer. Not know, by not the same deer. deer. Yeah, yeah, we've we've seen that firsthand on some of our plots. So you're not going to stop that. You're not going to stop. It. There's absolutely nothing you can do. There's natural brows out there. Say you don't put a food plot in. There's still natural brows out there. I mean, yeah. say you got ragweed. Deer love ragweed. That's 19 something percent protein. Well, two deer can eat that one piece of ragweed. I mean, it's not like yeah. hide off Mark's plate. And, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's not. Right. It's not the same thing. They don't I mean, have. What? They don't have Dixie plates yeah, out there. I mean, to eat it's, a, you know, it's, it's like you said. I mean, if you if you have a field out there, and I mean, you know what the what your camera don't take a picture of is the other thirty deer yeah. that are on that end of the field side by side walking down the field. Right. Just, browsing that field every single night yep. so so that's it was a guy on i can't remember if it was tiktok facebook whatever video it was one of the i don't remember what college or whatever it was they did research on they said all the tests they've done cwd is the same thing as a human having uh dementia alzheimer's all that kind of stuff it's all the same thing but it's just related to a animal that it wasn't the government's making more out of it than what it really is. Yeah, I would agree with that. Well, I think we should just put piles of protein and corn out there then just hang some masks on a tree. And if you know somebody wants to be safe, they can put a mask oh, yeah. on. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it is what it is. Let the deer so, make the decision. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. The difference on that then. If, if they're worried about, and like I said, I'm just, this might not even make sense, but if the deer's eating corn, falls out of its mouth, another deer eats it up, it's got a saliva spit, slobber, whatever you want to call it on it. What's the difference in the same deer drinking out of a mud hole the size of that table right there? I think you just said it. What's the difference? I mean, it's the same. I mean, in my mind, I'm seeing you're getting the same. What's real good is they think once you cross that levee, it don't happen. Right. <laughs> yep. so that's the real kicker right <laughs> or there. Or once you cross from Tupelo to Alabama, yeah, it yeah. doesn't happen. It's, it's, like, a, well, it's a visible I mean, sign that the deer see we don't. I you guess. cross over a little artificial hill that's yeah. supposed to be a levee, and all of a sudden them deer are healthy on that side. You can feed. 
Yeah, I don't it's Crocs know. what it is. I, I don't understand it. I don't. Uh, I don't pretend to. I don't pretend to have any knowledge of it either. Uh, though, we gonna get some. We gonna get some knowledge. And oh yeah. The podcast. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, <laughs> Somebody's gonna send it in. I can't wait. This is gonna go viral. And Kyle's and Karen's will come out of the woodwork. Well, I mean, I wish we could feed. I mean, it's it's you know for years we. I've always done this, you know, before they, you know, stopped all the, or had the CWD rule or whatever, but, you know, putting down some kind of mineral out there to kind of enhance your deer. I mean, I did it at the house for ours, you know, it wasn't really just to attract them there, but, you know, if you give a crap about the animal, you want to try to keep it as right. healthy as possible. So the salt block <clears throat> or mineral block, can, is it legal or illegal? No, no. Here? Anything on the ground, that's I believe. Thought, that's what I thought all that was. No, but illegal. you go to Walmart buy it. Oh, Walmart, Walmart, they got deer, they got corn just for deer. So yeah. I'll say this and say it for what it's worth. <laughs> My corn sales last year were triple what they normally well, were. Well, when you can go <laughs> so, up and pull keep up, that in mind. <laughs> when you can pull over on the side of a road and put money in a machine that dumps out corn yeah. in a bucket, you know there's a yeah. market. <laughs> there's a market. We've <laughs> seen, we've seen that yeah. last yeah. week. There's not a co op in Mississippi <laughs> that didn't carry corn, rice bran. <laughs> they carried it all last year. So. It's out there. Yeah. And I think another thing, too, with supplemental feeding is, you know, we talked about somebody that doesn't have the equipment to put a food plot in. Well, that's good for his deer. If he doesn't yeah. have the time or the equipment. or Yeah, I didn't hey, think about it that way. You're maybe you don't here. even have the money to run a tractor. I mean, tractors ain't cheap to run. There's something always breaking. At least with mine, there's something always breaking. Yeah. I mean. You can put a feed trough or a feeder. And yeah. Go buy you your can stuff. build you a feed trough and go buy you a $16 bag of pellets, you know, well, every other week, whatever. I mean. You look at how property, like. You know, some properties you physically, it's just all bottomland swamp. Yeah. You can't put a food plot there. Nope. You're just going to hunt. You have, there is nothing there for that animal to eat other than What's on some water and head? maybe some acorns. Yep. Maybe. Yeah, but, I, I don't know. That's one of those soap boxes you can go on for hours with. Oh, uh, we finna get on a good one here in a minute. We get accused this all the time and I'm going to, the old two letter word high fence. Oh, so yeah. That's what I'm ready to get fired up on. <laughs> we can do it. We can talk about it. So. Well, we've we've talked about a lot of different products and things like that. Um, you know, on all your prop on on your property in Alabama that you do feed for the people that listen that feed. I mean, wh- what all do y'all have there that y'all supplement with? Just you just doing the corn, the pellets. Is there anything else that y'all utilize out there? It's amazingly going to be your corn and pellets. Okay. Um, we and we are very very heavy pellets. Um, we have a contract actually with a company over there that. We feed their pellets, and as Mark just said, we'll get into a little later. We feed their pellets in another area of yeah. some owned property over there, um, but it, it's mainly your corn and pellets. But y'all, I mean, y'all are still doing food plots and all oh, yeah. winter yeah. plots and all that stuff. I and, mean, I've been over there before. And to be honest with you, it's it's a new property to us. We've probably not done exactly what we need to do on the food plots, but some of our food plots, I'll be honest, are your wheat over I mean, it's just. It's 1,400 acres. It's yeah. not necessarily easier for us to get in there and plant four or five food plots. We got well, 18 out there. Right. When I went over with y'all, you know, that, you know, y'all, y'all had the spin cast feeders yeah. that were out there in the fields and stuff, you know, and of course they, they went off like right at daylight or mm-hmm. right after daylight. Um, but the deer really didn't, I mean, they came over there, yeah. but that ain't what they, they might eat for just a second. And then they got in the food plot and they, you know, browse the food plot the rest of the morning. Yeah. And that, that spin feeder must most of the time, it's either going to have your corner protein in it. Uh, we do run the protein all year over there. I mean, we don't slack off. You know, everybody's like, well, you know, don't feed pellets during deer season. Well, after that rut, your buck needs. Heck, your does need it, too. They need the protein. I mean, they've yeah. just been sweating for, you know, weeks. But you said something earlier that on the mineral stuff and feed that is a huge, huge, huge misconception, I think. People think, as a hunter, we put out these mineral blocks or these – or it, where you can feed, you put out all this kind of stuff to draw deer in so you can shoot it off that. Yeah. But you just said that, I mean, you're doing it as a caretaker of the land, caretaker of the wildlife kind of deal versus harvesting deer. I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and I think as a land manager, we're all called to be, you know, shepherds, if you want, of your deer herd or of your property. I mean, that's anytime I can influence my deer and make them look a little healthier, I'm all about it. I mean, that's right. I mean, we're all stewards of the land or right. the animals that are there, and you make it better than what you found it. Yeah, there's a there's a respect for the animals, even though you're there to hunt right. them and you know kill them. Oh, yeah. But there's a respect for them. But, but all these people griping about it, they got bird feeders out there. Absolutely. They're feeding the humming birds. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So throwing a little, you know, why do you put, why, why, why do people turkeys? put bird feeders yeah. out there? Because they want to watch the birds. Yep. They want to see them. Same reason we do. Yep. Yep. 
I mean, every time I meet deer, I say this year, and I never picked my gun up the first deer. I mean, no, I, my <laughs> wife killed a uh, buck, and I think we may have killed one doe on our property here in Mississippi, and it's just, I just want to watch them. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, we're, we're trying to do a little stricter management over there anyways, but, I mean, half the time, it's just, it's cool just to watch them. Now, if you talk about putting stuff out for turkeys, that's a different animal. We put them out to kill them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all those crickets that Mikey bought this year, yeah. throw out there. So. Yeah, the crickets, we, we, we invested in the stock in the cricket market. <laughs> Uh, I don't understand that either. That's one of those soapboxes you can get on too. So, Lord have mercy. Mm. But Nothing yeah. surprises me. There's a lot of things out there that you can utilize that are uh, that can help you, you know, enhance enhance your property, enhance your uh, deer herd, and uh, all that goes hand in hand with with, with management. Period. You know, you you still got to do the, you still got to do the killing, mm. still got to manage your herd and keep those numbers down if you it, it if at all possible. Um, and that all goes back and puts into having a healthy property. Yep. That's right. Um, keep your health. It's, it's just as important keeping your property healthy as it is your, your herd. So yeah, you know, absolutely. Try to utilize some of those products as much as possible, whatever you can afford, whatever you can do. Anything you're doing is better than nothing. So yeah, be sure to definitely check your state laws and state regulations. Yeah. Cause every state's that gum different now. And there's that county to county's different. Yeah. There's no telling what's going to happen with the supplemental feeding going on in the state of Mississippi, but we'll see. Are there? But, uh, go ahead, Mark. But that law is the stop sign, so you can go all the way up to it. Don't right. stop back. I mean, push the limit. Right. You get in the gray area. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Just don't break it. Don't that. go through the stop sign. Well, there was. Uh, I know there's a lot of products out there, but uh, is there anything that you've seen that doesn't work, or maybe doesn't work as well gimmicky. as it should? Yeah, it's gimmicky. Yeah, it's I know there's a bunch. Stuff. You don't have to call no brand names, but yeah, I can't do that. I get in trouble for that. <laughs> no, no, don't uh, do I'll that. be getting 15 phone calls when this thing comes out. Um, <laughs> I would say it's kind of what we talked about earlier. I think you know your golf annual rise kind of a gimmick. I mean, it, it looks beautiful, but there's no nutritional value. Um, that then, regardless of where you're buying your seed at, I mean, yes, co-op's going to be knowledgeable people but if you walk in some of these big box stores or just fly by night thing look on the back and see what's in that yeah, bag just because 50 pounds in that bag don't mean it's it could be 97 percent golf annual yeah right? we've yeah. seen it happen yeah i mean go to walmart and pick up a you know whatever products yeah. walmart carries and flip it around and look how much golf annuals in that i mean no there's nothing wrong with golf annuals that's what you want to plant it's easy to grow up heck i think i had some grow in my truck bed last year <laughs> i mean it's very very easy to do they will eat it oh they'll definitely <laughs> eat it but they'll, you've got to like you say, see what the protein you want to put on your property versus the, you know, what you want to feed on right. your property or, or or grow on your property. Keep in mind, for just a few bucks more, you can put something with a little more protein out there, and you'd be doing yourself a favor and your deer a favor. So, yeah, we we've noticed that. I mean, we we've always, you know, well, I planted food plots on government land. wasn't even supposed to be doing it, you know, just little oh, yeah. plots and stuff like that. But anyways, you know, those some of those bags that I was throwing out, it, it was just. Straight golf. Just some old junk. Yep. You know, that not I say junk. I shouldn't have said that. It's it was rye grass. That yep. It was pretty green. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's turned beautiful. It green. It looked yeah. pretty. That's the most you know. pretty picture you'll ever take. But I mean, you look at my food plots and you're like, that looks awful. Yeah, but I got a lot of deer, so I mean it's they they utilize my plots. So Well. Mm. We finna huh. bring Huh? You finna bring up the other touch touchy uh -uh. subject? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm gonna let Mikey roll off on that whenever he gets ready. I was just thinking about the old government land food plots. We worked our tail off for the freaking yeah. things just to oh, put some rye grass out when there. When I first started, look, I did some stuff that Mike Powell would probably not be happy about. So. <laughs> yeah, I think we tracked a four-wheeler with a disc behind it, you know, oh, all absolutely. the way down this four-wheeler trail, all the way to the back, you know, got it back here. I think we, I don't remember. It was a log, the log landing or something. Back it was a log landing. Log. But it, we done it. It was, we're, we were, we were the dumb criminals because the disc was just a little four-foot this our granddaddy pulled behind a farm all so we didn't have tires <laughs> so we drug it from camp so we dissed the road from <laughs> camp all the way to the food plot like you could track it right back to us we we'll talking about for a very easy track job yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a, what a line out of that one no we were just having the game warden yeah, that's, right. right. that's right they I mean, planted food plots he's in planting in the right spot <laughs> y'all just care about the state of mississippi very a whole lot y'all just want to right. help these deer out so we wasn't the only ones hunting the plot either <laughs> no, no 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 look we've we've cut uh taking chainsaws to the drop zone years ago. I don't do this anymore, just for the record, and made a beautiful duck hole when we killed some birds in it and went out there two days later, and I think we were one of 500 people out there. Yeah. I was like, well, everybody <laughs> have fun this morning. Yeah. I made this for y'all. So. Yeah. You know, we used to hunt the drop zone before people knew it was even water back there. Man, it was, it was it used to some be of the fire. best hunting ever. Yeah, now you can't get back there without 
a we, million people. We built a floating blind that was shoot. It's probably six by twelve, six by fourteen. It was it was a big floating blind. Had I think six fifty five gallon drums under it, and then four thirty gallon drums like pontoons. Yeah, and man, we killed some ducks until somebody shot holes in our drums, and it don't <laughs> it don't float then. Beautiful public land. Huh? It's a good time. Absolutely. It, it made me the hunter I am today. It made me appreciate having private property a whole <laughs> lot more. Yeah. Oh, if you told me I had to duck hunt on public land, I I'll sell, my, I'll yeah, sell my I waders. I'll sell everything I got. I ain't anymore. Got I don't know if I want to duck hunt on private land. But honestly, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a waste of money anymore, it feels like. So. It does. Here it does. Yeah, around here. That's a bad deal. But anyway, so we've, we've talked about, you know, a bunch of different things. So we're going to roll into something that's a little bit different. Um you actually help with a with another type of property. Y'all have the 1,400 acres you was talking about. That is open ground. That is wild. Um, yep. The one you have here in Mississippi is the same way. Um, but you do have one of your friends and uh, are affiliated with him in uh, a high fence deal. Yep. yep. Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, I can't wait for this. Is- <laughs> well, first off, you've rode our property. Uh-huh. Do you see a high fence anywhere on it? <laughs> There's at least... I've seen at least two corners of it. I haven't seen the other side, so I know, I know for sure that you talking about that twenty foot fence out there. Yeah, right? yeah, foot, yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, all right, just making sure. We're I definitely clear there. saw it. Yep. So y'all are definitely part of the high fence club. So, but oh. yep. To uh, answer your question, I do help. I know that's it can be a controversial topic. Um, guy that owns its name is Tim Horton. Um, if there's any bass fishing guys that are listening to this, which I'm sure there is, fish BASS for years, major league fishing, just retired this year. Uh, I mean, he's one of the top fishermen in the world still to this day. Uh, he owns Willow Oak Lodge. Um, you can look it up online, willowoaklodge.com. Um, it's, I think, I could be totally wrong on this because he's been acquiring land and moving stuff here lately. I, I want to say it's right at 900 acres inside of the high fence preserve, essentially. Um, you got cabins. You could stay there, and you've seen the cabins. It's, yeah. it, it ain't your typical log cabin. No. It's, it's, it's a beautiful piece of property. Um. But, you know, in all honesty, the first time my wife and I went, we had in mind, this is what you're going to shoot, this is what I'm going to shoot. I had the bigger deer, obviously. But, you know, I was going to let her, you know, shoot a nice deer. People think high fence, a, a you know, a feeder goes off, and in five minutes they're going to tell you there's three deer going to come out, this deer, this deer, this deer, pick out whichever one you want. We didn't see a deer to the last day. We hunted hard for three days. Yeah. I mean, it's it's managed as a typical wild piece of property. Now, you can go to those places in Texas where, you know, they'll put rocks in your feeder just for the sound of it to go off, and they'll yeah. say 15 deer about to walk out. That's not Willow Oak, in my opinion. Um, now, your odds of killing a 250-inch deer are a whole lot better than a wild piece of property. Um, but it's managed, in all honesty, the same way as we manage any other property. I, I mean, think all it goes back to, it's like anything. It can be abused or misinterpreted on being a bad thing. It's like, gross or misinterpreted. yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it really is. Well, I think a lot of your complaints are the neighbor because that 250-inch deer can't walk over their property. Right. And all the work you put in, They're getting he pulls the trigger <laughs> on it. Yep. And that's my, that's my I'm, I'm all for it, yep. you know, because, now granted, I don't think you should high fence 50 acres. You yep. know, that's right. a little unrealistic. Absolutely. But, you know, if you have the acreage and the property to do it on, why not? Right. You know, it's... All in my opinion, that's the only thing that benefits is you can control the predators in the property, and then you can control the neighbors. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's too many times where we always talk about trying to manage small property. You put all this work in, and old Fred next door that hunts one time a year just smoked a deer. You've been growing for four years, right. five yeah. years, you know, yeah. which is it's part of it. Yeah. But in the same sense, Fred's the one griping when you put a fence up. That's right. That's right. It's uh. It's a it's a beautiful piece of property. In all honesty, I know when Mikey pulled in, he was like, "Man, we're you know passing shooting houses. Is there people out here?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> you're you're good. You know, you're not disturbing anybody." But I mean, and Tim treats it like it's a wild piece of property. He doesn't overhunt it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a select number of deer we put in there, or that Tim puts in there. Um, we even have a little book, you know, as we do on our private land. We have a book with the pictures of our deer, and we said, "This is a do not kill deer. This is a you know a three year old." that we're letting live or whatever it may be. I mean, we treat it just like a normal piece of property. So how does that, how does that get started? I mean, you, you have a piece of property and uh, you decide you're going to do something like that. 
like what are the re- what is it, how does the state regulate that because i know they I, I just heard this i don't know if there's any truth to it but you you're really supposed to kind of take out you are the yep. wild animals that are on the property right yep so when the fence goes up you are supposed to take out any wild animals on the property mainly the deer why, why is that or do you know i don't know if the word about i mean because I, th- I this is just in my opinion but you're taking ownership of that animal at that point that's and technically you did not own an animal, animal, to animal i think that's a Probably, probably exactly yeah, probably what it is so, yeah but it's uh I, I mean i'm sure every state's different and i uh, to be totally honest with you i don't know alabama's laws completely on it yeah um, but it's i mean essentially as soon as he put the fence up it's it's go time i mean clear food plots mulch out a lot of food plots and it's it's some steep country over there oh yeah you can imagine chasing a turkey over there it's yeah that gum impossible I, I was going to book a turkey hunt over there and i was like man i uh yeah. some of those places we went boy they were uh bring your jordans or something don't bring no boots because <laughs> you're you're gonna do a lot of walking and it's straight uphill so tim and i have chased the turkey for hours and sat down finally and we're like man we're, we're giving up i mean it's <laughs> it's just part of it but it's uh it, i mean any efforts that you do on private land we do there i mean it's your same concept but Tim has, he has like actual breeders in there, though, breeder mm-hmm. bucks, right? He does. That, that you don't kill or anything that's, like that. That's correct. Does he, does he, does he let those out? Does he let them run around or are they, how do you keep from? They are not running free range when they are deemed the breeder buck. Yeah. Um, they are kind of in the back and they're in, you know, they're with does in the back for breeding purposes, obviously. But, um, you, you know, it's kind of funny that Tim and his dad, Mr. Raymond, they, we call him Claude Ray. He's, I don't know how old Mr. Raymond is, but it's so funny watching them back there because you would, I'm sure most people get the, the impression that when you have these, you're like, I don't care about the deer. You know, yeah. whatever, just whatever. Let's shoot them up with some antibiotics and go on. Claude Ray will be back there on the side by side and eat a piece of apple and throw the rest of it to the deer. I mean, they, you know, they care about their deer back yeah. there. It's not, they're not in a, you know, a dog kennel size pen, right? I mean, they're, they're in a pen, yes. But I mean, it's a it's a big pen. They got plenty of breeding opportunities, plenty of food, plenty of water. I mean, Tim takes a lot of pride in everything back there. So, but they so he'll he'll put those in there, let them get inseminated, and then cut the does back out. That's correct. And then that breeder book just kind of stays back there. And yes, to an extent. And then, you know, there's he's a, got there, the job. He's got the oh, best yeah. job on the property. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now there comes a point where you know you rotate breeder bucks. Yeah. Um, last year, I think there was a. 250 something back there and then in another pen there's a 170 with really good genetics back there so i mean it's you know it's it's not all 400 inch deer that you see on tv I mean, yeah there's a lot of natural looking deer that don't look like you just pump them up with steroids so, so i don't understand how to get that i there's several youtube channels i follow that are all deer farms and they're heck four and five hundred inch deer on oh there. yeah and i don't they're cool looking i guess you'd say but i'm i think a 200 inch more typical not crazy looking deer is a, a cooler neater looking rack but. i think a, a lot of those farms i mean i relate it to humans you look at me and mark we're tall and skinny but we took steroids and we worked <laughs> out for six months well we yeah. wouldn't be tall and skinny anymore yeah i mean we'd be i uh, probably would be <laughs> i probably find a way to be too somehow but um I, I think it's the you know the same concept there are a lot of farms yeah. that go in there and I really, really they want really, those five hundred inch deer. I mean, some something stupid looking, in my opinion. But. I'm wanting to go to a deer farm, and <clears throat> like I say, it is a business and is a huge, huge, huge growing business. Oh, absolutely. But it's not like I say, them people. That's like family members. They care for them deer. It's not like oh, it's, it's, it's a. It's, a I mean, it's, it's no different than a cattle farmer. You yeah, know, most true cattle farmers are. Oh, yeah. They care. Yeah, they're about passionate about their cows. Yeah, yeah it's uh, and you know, people get the the impression where it's oh, y'all feed them this and then y'all just leave them now they're out there every single day i mean it's like yeah. a cattle farmer just like you said yeah. they're feeding those deer pellets every single day checking on the health of them if something needs to be done you know they'll get darted and give them medication i mean they're in a, a weird way that's kind of your kids i guess but i yeah. mean it's uh they take a lot of care of their animals so well uh tim don't, i mean he don't just sell the, the turkeys and things that are in there they're they're wild turkeys right that's correct yep yep so and then like we mentioned, we have the 1,400 acres that we are going to start letting people even, yeah. you know, turkey hunt over there. But it's uh, – Tim's got his hand in a lot. He owns uh, Profound Outdoors, which is his lure company. He owns Azuma Rods, which is his rod company. He has Willow Oak. They do weddings now. They have a massive wedding venue. Um, 
and they have like an event for the kids in the summer. The kids come over there and they get to fish the little ponds, catch brim, catch crappie, whatever, and then they'll have a big fish fry. So it's a it's a very family oriented place, which that's why my wife and I love it. I mean, we got a little boy and we can't wait to take him over there and you know, just Hey, what's the age limit? Hey, we can I, go right am now. I out of it. <laughs> no, no, you're not out of it, I assure <laughs> you. So but turkey hunts over there have been just incredible. Like they they kill a lot of birds over there. So what are uh what what all else does Tim offer over there? I mean, he does he does he do fishing chores yeah. and stuff? Yeah, like and he'll um he's still got his rat boat from Major League Fishing. I mean, he'll I think th- there may be another guy that helps him out on that. I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, but Tim can take you out to Smith Lake. Tim's one of the best deep water crankbait fishermen of all time. I mean, yeah, he's incredible. There's hardly anybody in the world better than Tim on that, and that's not just because I know him. I mean, that's that's a proven fact. Um, but he'll do quail pheasant hunts. Um, he's got two dogs. Uh, turkey hunts, like I said, weddings. And I mean, you can just rent the cabin out if you just want to go up there and ride around on side by sides and, you know, look at the wildlife fish. They got Lake Lauren down there. It's a spring fed natural lake that he put some small mouth in. And I mean, it's get a little boat out there and you can have a day with it. I mean, it's, it's a blast. Sound like we need to book a stay over yeah, in the put, summertime. We, the we can go over and look at the deer operation. If catching yeah. six, seven pound smallmouth are for you, then yeah, I would recommend going. Oh, there. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's fun it's a good place so yeah we we went over and stayed uh back this past winter and uh it was it he has a really really nice facility uh going in that thing you're a little intimidated when you pull off the highway oh. you go in you're not sure if you're at the right place or not yep so it looks like jurassic park <laughs> it does you got two big gates as soon as you walk in i mean it's uh it does it looks like jurassic park that's a good way to put that <laughs> but but i mean these people that are investing that much of their life, that much of their money, you're, they got to be, but it's way beyond passion they have for oh, the and their game. Cause it's, yeah. I mean, it's, you're looking at a ton of money and a ton of time that they could invest in something else, but that's what they mm-hmm. care about. I'm yeah. Sure. I mean, in all honesty, Tim could still be fishing. I mean, he's good enough where he could still be on the major league fishing tour. I mean, that's, but he has such a passion for, I mean, just getting families in the outdoor and yeah. deer hunting, turkey hunting. I mean, Tim's turkey hunting. He, he loves turkey hunting. It, he tells me all the time, if turkey hunting 12 months out of the year, he wouldn't have a wife. I mean, he, <laughs> he loves it. Um, so, you know, turkey hunting, I think, in my opinion, is probably one of his primary focuses over there. But, I mean, his, his deer hunting, his, his passion for it is it's, it's, it's incredible. So Well, you know, we, y'all were talking, we were kind of comparing that to, like, you know, cow herds and stuff like that. I mean, you, you try to grow the biggest cow and the most healthy cow oh, yeah. you can, you know, and – like y'all said, you know, you, you give a crap about that thing. You go out there and pet it and, you know, ride out in the field, yep. spend time with them on, a, you know, pretty much a daily basis, you know. So you have a relationship with, you know, I know not all the deer on the property are like that, but, right. you know, like his breeders and stuff like that, you know, that's, that's a pretty cool deal. I never did get back there to get to see the breeder, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I may try to hook up with Tim and get over there this summer. We can do at it. At some point. We can definitely do it. So, and I encourage anybody that, looking for just a getaway i mean you don't want to go to the beach or whatever i, mean, I gotta bring him a grill too yeah, yeah. like a road trip to me he needs, <laughs> he needs a weber he needs, <laughs> he needs, he needs, he needs a weber so. i know we caught two on fire yeah, we, yeah. we look we look pretty bad over there cooking on tim's front porch over there i think he walked out with a fire extinguisher at one he point did. he walked over and handed me a fire thing he said hey boys y'all think y'all need this that poor pit boss ain't been cleaned in probably 15 years away at uh-huh. but, but no it's uh it needs a weber for sure so yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna take him a grill, <laughs> but no, that's a that that's a cool operation. If you get an opportunity to go over to Alabama and check that out, that's a really cool place to go. They offer a lot of different things, and uh, it's uh the the accommodations are just immaculate. I, I can't even explain them. You just have to see it for yourself. Yeah, um, a lot of pictures on there online too, but I promise you, pictures do not do justice. No, um. But Tim, I mean, he's a great host. He's he's a really cool guy to sit down and talk to and, and just listen to him talk about his career and fishing and stuff like that. And I know we had a lot of fun over there that weekend. So yeah, absolutely. Maybe we can make it back one time. Oh, we can do it. We can do it. So we'll have the whole crew up next time. So So outside of sowing seed and hunting, what's your hobbies other than what's your what are what else are you passionate about? I'll be honest with you. I used to love fishing a whole lot more. Uh, I used to fish a lot of bass tournaments myself, a lot of local. I was never famous by any means. I was never really that good, to be honest with you. But uh, we have an 11-month-old, so a lot of my hobbies seem to have kind of died off (laughs) a little bit, to be honest with you. Um, But 
I mean, I'm a definitely a full time dad, full time sowing seed now. Um, but it's uh, I'd say anything outside. I mean, heck, we love just sitting on the dead gun back patio with a fire and throwing a grill on, drinking a couple of beer, and being done. I mean, there you it's, go. My hobbies have died down a whole lot as I've gotten older. I mean, I used to tell you I never stopped fishing, but heck, I don't hardly ever fish anymore. So it's funny. It's funny how your priorities switch when kids come into play. Very much so. Very much well, so. That, and then you get to a certain age that you want to teach it to somebody else. Yeah. See, or see what see what they're going through, and not not that you're tired of it yourself, but you just kind of you want to show, show that to somebody else besides you yeah. know. Well, you want to pay it off to where somebody showed you. So right. you want to pass that on, you know? That's right. So I had a, a cousin essentially growing up that pretty much taught me everything I know about the hunting side of things, but that's uh that's something I can't wait to pass on to him for sure. So Well Well that's about got us for the day, yeah. boys, unless y'all got something else. No, I don't. got a lot we probably could talk about, but Yeah. Well y'all had the Hope Outdoors oh, yeah, banquet. Yeah, we had the Hope Outdoors banquet this past weekend. That was Northwest chapter, the first big banquet they did and it was a huge 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 success it was probably man just guessing it's probably around 200 people there 175 200 people i seen where they posted the official total what the money raised it was like 33 yeah yeah, not counting donations or not counting donations that night yeah that was a real real that's all great yeah it was real good uh if anybody is interested like we're talking about having passion for anything check out hope outdoors they got a couple youtube videos out and if it don't if it don't get you going, I don't know what it is. No, it's a definitely a a good organization, and we've been very fortunate to be involved with a lot of organizations similar to that. To where, like you're saying, it's passing on the passing on the passion. I guess you'd say. You know, we get to bring people in that maybe never would have had an opportunity to hunt, and these organizations are doing that, and you know, getting kids involved and adults too. And it's pretty awesome to sit back and just watch. You know, I'm not a real go getter and you know, I, I I do what I can, but that's one of the things where if you can't just sit back and watch and see that, and like you say, it, it'll get me in my feels. It's oh, yeah. it's pretty awesome. So, but we got anything in the community that you know of? We're going to be running some contests. Uh, this is our last uh, podcast, but we still got the community page up. Uh, any fish y'all are catching? Last podcast for the spring. Yeah, for the spring. Yeah, we'll we'll kick it back off at probably early summer or late summer and. Come back and give y'all an update on what we've done for over the summer and maintaining the property and different things. But, uh, yeah, check out the community page. We'll probably drop some contests on there. Uh, continue to put you pictures on there. We don't care what it is, man. We ain't going to bash you. Give us the smallest fish, biggest fish, whatever you got. Uh, anything you killed, turkeys or deer or whatever, man, just uh, shoot it over to us. Let us look at it. And I'd love to comment on it. So as a filler between now and the next podcast, we have food plots have been sprayed. And then we are planting vetch and buckwheat. We try just vetch, just vetch. We're going straight vetch this time and uh, corn and corn. So, so the big fields will be all our big fields will be corn. Uh, we're going to try to run that again. Hopefully, we can keep the cows out of it this time. <laughs> uh, y'all ain't got no cow proof yeah, corn to sell, do you? <laughs> we need some extra nah. high fence. Cow ready? Yeah. We got some of that high fence corn we can get y'all, but that's about it. So. So uh, I did. I did acquire some corn and vetch from uh, BWI, and uh, we're going to put vetch in some of the smaller plots. Some of those two and three acre plots, uh, acre and a half to the three acres, we're putting the vetch in those. And those bigger plots, those eight nine acre fields, we're going to be dropping corn in those. So, and we'll come back uh, after. after and we'll that's get content out. on all this oh, too. Yeah. yeah, it'll be yeah, plenty. We'll try to drop some YouTube videos, maybe some long form stuff of us planting and what we're doing and all that stuff. So. Um, Y'all, y'all look for those if uh, if you're interested in doing that. We'll try to drop them this summer as we get them. And uh, anyways, that's about all we got. That and everybody's been pushing the what no no mo may for yeah for yeah. turkey nesters and uh, yep. no mo may yep no mo may turkey nest and bones on the bones road. dropping for yep. sure. So pay attention when you're out there on the tractor for sure. Definitely, yeah, we definitely try to. I mean. We maintain our trails and stuff like that, but as far as getting in big fields, and we ain't finna like bail that, off in one of them no, thickets or nothing. No, we try to we try to say that's you know I mean it's good it's good for you to do that. I mean you just that's all cover and food for the deer and the yeah. turkeys and stuff. So got our cameras back out. We got we got some bucks putting on antlers. That's a good sign. And some velvet horns look so big. 
Man, it look like two big old beer cans <laughs> up on top of their head right now. They probably gonna be a spike. Yeah. <laughs> But we appreciate y'all listening. Like I say, y'all check us out on all the platforms. We we got some content coming out. Should have a uh, a different barbecue sandwich y'all to be hitting here in the next week or so. And uh, I don't know what you got coming out next. Some, some diabetic killer recipes. Yeah, it come out this lately. week. Your dumplings, the peach dumplings, they were dang good. Yeah. And then, Mikey, you got, what was yours? Big Mac sliders. Yeah, Big Mac yeah. sliders are out right now. So. Bang, bang, turkey, Malcolm put out. Yeah, that done really good. That was a good recipe. Yeah. But other than that, man, we appreciate y'all listening, and we finna film some recipes today and get the day kicked off, and good luck fishing. Turkey season wrapped up for us. I think, talk to Jay, Indiana's got two more days or three more days to go. Is Alabama Ar- closed? Alabama's closed now. Yep. Arkansas still got a little bit longer. If I've- well, Alabama will be closed by the time this comes out. So Yeah. But that's it. We finna get to work. As Michael says, we gone.